Hey everyone, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is going to be a new best and worst books of 2021. However, these are all very specific prompts that I either added to a list or that you gave me. You gave me a ton. So I chose 30 that I could actually answer because some of them were great, but I just don't have a book to recommend with that specific topic. So I'm going to go through them. Something very chill. I mean, if everything goes well, this is going on the 24th of December. So I'm wearing my I don't really have a Christmassy Wednesday, so that's the closest thing we have. We're being comfy, okay? So uh, let's get to it because 30 questions. I will list, by the way, uh, the rest of the playlist with the best, worst, most surprising, most disappointing books of the year, which I will probably mention some of these here quickly, but if you want more information. Uh, best world building, to no one's surprise. Uh, Words of Radiance, Brandon Sanderson. He's one of my favorite author because of his world building and magic systems. Um, but I like how everything always is linked, like religion, politics, and magic. And it's, it, it's popular for a reason and definitely the best one that I have read this year easily, which uh, let's keep that on the screen because best plot twist. I vlogged it and I was losing my shit on camera because uh, it's not even that I didn't expect whatever happened, you know, spoiler free, um, to happen. It's just, I didn't expect it to happen this early in that way. And I just pleasantly surprised, I guess. I, I still can't believe it. I need to continue. I have like the first four books on my shelf. I've read two and I'm trying to spread them because the third, fifth one is coming out, uh, not next year, but the one after. So I'm trying to, you know, you know, so, um, yes, definitely reading at least one, if not both next year. Um, then the worst twist. Uh, all of the ones I will mention were in my worst of the year, so <laughs> makes sense. Uh, the first one, that, the one that makes the most sense is Survive the Night because it's mystery thriller and the ending just sucked. It just did. Mm, yeah. If you want the spoilers, check out the worst. I go into details, but I hated everything in there, literally. Uh, the Wise Men's Sphere by Patrick Rothfuss. It's not so much a twist than like that section which I guess it kind of a twist, but I feel like it just affected the rest of the story and the 10 chapters were straight up torture. So hated that. And then on a milder note, I would include also Hostage by Claire McIntosh. The explanation for why her kid was kidnapped, bad, just straight up bad. Uh, best character development, Sword of Kaijin. Loved it for that. I think that I struggled in the beginning of the book, like the first half, because uh, you have the main female character who grew up in a fairly progressive family, uh, learned, you know, magic and, and fighting to uh, an international school, and then she marries in a very, very conservative family, and she kind of just accepts her fate. And it's really hard to read from her point of view, uh, but I think that with the rest of the book, there's a great character's arc for her and her husband, her family, the community. I just adored it. So yes, best character development for me. Most hateable character and most likely to give you an existential crisis. The Kite Runner. Um, my, that book, I completely now understand why everyone raved about it. I was so stubborn to not read it for years, but uh, definitely not the main character is the most hateable one, although it was a struggle to read from his point of view because... He's not super likable. And I think the villain in the story is the most hateable one because a little bit like Harry Potter, people will mention like when a villain is like realistic, it makes it so much worse. And that's exactly how I felt about this one. And yeah, ex existential crisis, obviously still thinking about that book. We'll continue to think about that book. The Kite Runner, for sure. Uh, books that subvert common tropes really well. Okay, I have two different tropes. The first one is overpowered main character. It's definitely something I hate. I've mentioned it so many times, but one that could have been like that, but wasn't for me, you might disagree, uh, The Rage of Dragons. I think that a main character kind of like unwillingly ends up uh, learning how to fight and he does become strong fast, but the explanation makes sense to me. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. I think so. Uh, love triangle though. That's always a topic. I <laughs> I love hating uh, love triangles usually, uh, especially in YA books. I feel like it's never realistic. There's always like one of them that's the best, you know, friend, male friend, and like no, no, sort of kaijin, right? Uh, if you have read the book, I feel like that would be a love triangle I'm not against. So yes, that one. The best sequel. Okay, um, it's no secret that I cannot finish the series to save my life. And it's especially bad this year because I have only read six sequel this year, six. That's not a lot. And two of them I absolutely hated. So that, that can't be that. So not a lot of competition here. So Words of Radiance, 
Brandon Sanderson. Uh, best books that was just not for me. So a book that was objectively good, just not my thing. I have two answers. The first one is The Huntress, which historical fiction uh, around World War II. Uh, I just can't read another one. Like I know they're super popular, but for some reason I just can't do it anymore. And I did overall enjoy that book, to be honest. Uh, I preferred some of the flashbacks really than everything else. Like there's just one character I liked basically, but uh, I can completely understand why there's so much hype behind it. So, you know, uh, and then the other one is My Dark Vanessa, which it's a contemporary, adult contemporary about uh, grooming. So obviously it wasn't enjoyable to read about. I found it super triggering and frustrating, uh, but it was well written from the point of view of the victim. And I completely, once again, understand the hype. It's just not my thing. A book that you picked in the foreign language section, one that was translated, so kind of works, uh, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, which I don't know if it was a prompt or not, but a book that like I wasn't planning on reading. <laughs> it just happened that way because I was doing the one week, one jar. Uh, <laughs> One week, one shelf jar challenge. And uh, I ended up reading it, absolutely loving it. I I read the first two. I have like one last one to read next year, but to my surprise, it was great. Best and worst portrayal of women. Okay, I, I chose two male authors just to balance it out. Uh, the worst, Surviving the Night by uh, Riley Sager. I feel like at this point, I have no hopes for him to write a decent female character. I don't know why I keep torturing myself. I just, too stubborn, I guess. But on the other side of the spectrum, we have Kelly Decini with A Thousand Splendid Sons, which um, is so quotable. There's this quote, a couple quotes actually by him about women. And I think uh, multiple of the female characters in there were really well written. And I just love the book, love the book. Uh, books that should or shouldn't be required reading in school. Okay, uh, the ones that should, I would go with Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. I really enjoy that one. I think a time traveling, might make uh, kids want to read it more. It starts really strong, it's a quick read, and it's really, really impactful. So I think that would be a great uh, start of a bunch of discussion in school. I don't know if it's required anywhere. If you read it in school, let me know, because that maybe. The one that shouldn't, I don't think I've read any that was really like a school kind of book, but one that a lot of people in school, while they were in school, read it, Flowers in the Attic. Why did so many people read this when they were like 10? No, awful. Uh, hopefully that will not be a thing in the future. <laughs> Most likely to restore your fate in humanity. Becky Chambers, obviously. We know my love for her. Uh, a Psalm for the Well Built. Lovely book, very calming, very comforting. Uh, main characters like a non-binary monk and in a world where basically one day robots got up and left us. And they're trying to uh, figure out what they want to do with their life. So yeah, very character driven story, but I just adored it. Uh, a book with an interesting premise that failed in ed execution, vice versa, the ones that were boring and turned out to, uh, that sounded boring, but turned out great. Um, so for the one that failed, I would go with The Atlas Six because Magical School, it sounded great and it definitely needed an editor, which now there is one, so it's probably going to change in the future, but there was just so much potential with this story. And ugh. as far as the opposite, I'm gonna go with Summer Frost, which was it like a short story, it's a novella, part of the uh, Ford collection. And the reason I'm saying that it sounded boring is the fact that it's about like a video game, like artificial intelligence. And I haven't had one good experience, <laughs> like not one. But out of the five in the collection that I have read, this was my second favorite. And a lot of people was, it was their number one. So. I think that if you're looking for a quick read, uh, this collection in general is great, but this one, there's a strong chance you will love it. Uh, the weirdest book that I have read, I've definitely mentioned how weird it is, uh, Black Sun, which <laughs> the first chapter and then people riding on giant crows. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The best YA book that I've read, I'm gonna go with Cemetery Boys, although I just finished, um, how do I forget the book that I just finished? My brain has been so off all month long. Uh, Legendborn. This was, I was feeling kind of throughout it, like in the beginning it was strong, then it's like up and down and the ending I thought was pretty strong. So also a good one. New favorite author. It is so hard to choose one, especially since like I don't tend to read like five book by the same author every year, which maybe I should start doing that more. Uh, but it's either Octavia E. Butler because I have a couple of her books on my shelf. I keep wanting to read them and I don't. Uh, I think I'm just scared 
I don't know. <laughs> There's no real explanation here. I, I just haven't. Uh, but also Caladocini, like one or the other. They're both new favorite authors for me. Books with the best group or band of misfits. Jade City, it's mostly a family, like um, Godfather-esque, Mafia-esque. Two groups against each other to control the city, magical powers. It's not usually, again, Mafia is not really my thing, but I love this. Book that took the longest to finish. I feel personally attacked. There are definitely a few. I've been in a slump in and out throughout the year, uh, but I think that the best one to mention here would be part two in the uh, Le Comte de Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas, which I started this, what, two years ago? Three years ago? <laughs> And it, it's even worse, actually, if you consider the fact that it's in two parts. So the first part, I started that years ago. So maybe four years? <laughs> that sounds so bad. But yes, I finally finished it, so I'm very happy. Uh, but definitely the one that took me the longest to finish, ever. Um, best covers. Okay, so many. I'm just going to put them on a the screen quickly. Uh, a song for the Wild Built. Such a quiet place. Her, her covers are always great. Uh, the Sundown Motel, for some reason, just works for me. Firekeeper's Daughter, which everyone will agree, In Order to Live, specifically my edition, and Northanger Abbey, also same thing, my edition. This collection, gorgeous. Most Wholesome, Becky Chambers, I've read two books by her, both of them super wholesome. I think that if you like really character-driven stories, you just have to try. It's not even my thing usually, well, not as much as like some people that are really, really loving them, but um, least expectations before, most impact after. Emergency Skin, by N.K. Jemison. I had just DNF'd another book by her like a few days prior when I picked this up. Within the same month, basically, I read two books by her and uh, one I DNF'd, first DNF of the year, and then one that I gave five stars to. So it worked. Most annoying character, Matt. <laughs> Do you know who I'm talking about? Matt uh, in Wheel of Time, the first book. I vlogged it for the Patreon book club and I was so annoyed throughout the whole Stupid Matt tried to guess what he was going to do every time and uh, he sucks But like in a lovable way obviously, but like damn you Matt ruining everything for everyone all the time um, <laughs> Best friendship project Hell Marie. I think that's yeah That's the first one that popped into my mind. So we're gonna go with that. Um, that's definitely one of the strength in this book best representation um, If you want something wholesome, I will once again mention Becky Chambers like I said, non-binary uh, monk, but I think my favorite one would have to be an unkindness of ghosts, which the main character is black, queer, and autistic, which I haven't read that many books, especially with that combination. And the book also had a topic that I'm usually a little wary to read about, and it worked for me. Uh, basically like remnant of humanity being stuck on a ship, spaceship traveling in space. I feel like it has been done a lot, but I'm never really happy with it. They're always weird, which makes sense, but like not a weird that I can enjoy, but that one I did. So I love that you specified best murder mystery book you actually liked. <laughs> I think uh, everyone is catching up to the fact that I love the idea of them, but I'm so often disappointed. Uh, the girl with the dragon tattoo, once again. It was really great. It had a bunch of stuff that I like, right? Um, a lot of it happened like a journalist trying to figure out uh, who uh, murdered or whatever um, family member of this rich guy. Everyone was on like a family event on an island and he's like trying to figure it out again. Just small village. I like it. I can't explain it. It just works for me. So yeah, that was my first five stars for a book like that in forever. Ooh, and then I have a question for you guys. What was the best video that I posted this year? I feel like a lot of you are going to say the drunk videos. <laughs> Listen, I'm not gonna like ruin my kidneys or my stomach for this, but I think that, ooh, you know what? In this video, we're gonna do that. Maybe I'll put it also in the community tab, but if you could uh, make me do one video, what would you want me to upload? Obviously I will veto anything, you know, but um, I would uh, definitely post whatever you guys choose next year, whenever, you know, it works out. So let me know, because personally, I think my favorite video, except for the drunk ones, which yes, they were funny, but such a mm, to edit because 
<laughs> it was a lot of footage of me trying to function normally towards the end. Um, but I really like also my really specific topic ones. Like I did one about uh, books that made me not want to have children. And it wasn't like a popular video, but I thought it was really funny. So I will definitely continue uh, posting videos like that. I'm just trying to find like fun ways to recommend books that I don't talk about a lot. Because like at the end of the day, I read uh, about 100 books a year less this year. But, you know, 90 books a year. So it's hard to not talk about the same, you know, 10 that were actually the best one over and over again. I'm trying to like keep things really interesting and I have a bunch of challenges next year that should uh, help out with that. But I always think it's funny to talk about some that get forgotten in the whole, you know, 500 books that I've read so far. So once again, let me know in the comment section if you have any answers to the prompts that I mentioned and what video, if you could make me do one, what video would you like me to post? Because I have a bunch planned, of course. I'm planning on doing more about fantasy and, like like I said, more recommendations. But I also want to know what you guys would like to see, of course. So that's going to be it for today's video. Thumbs up, subscribe. I will be putting more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out. And I will see you in an upcoming video very soon. Bye.